We passed a few houses and kind of yelling like, hello, is anyone inside? Can anyone help us? And this guy who's in the house screams out. Is that a human? Hell no. Oh no, this is not good. I think in September or October of 2011, I hopped into my car and I was like, I'm out of here. I left the house with just like a thousand dollars. I had friends in California and I wanted to spend a lot of time out there. On the journey, I'm looking at maps. I'm trying to use an actual physical map. And I saw that there was the Bonneville Salt Flats. I had seen shows where people were on the Bonneville Salt Flat. There was even like world speed records for cars that were broken on these salt flats. And I was like, I wanna drive on the Bonneville salt flats. And I get there, it's beautiful. Looks like the perfect glass mirror photographs. I drive right onto the salt flats and I'm going, I think it's cool. I'm driving and I notice myself kind of like slipping around a little bit. I notice the car isn't gripping like I expected. I cut the wheel and then all of a sudden my car sinks and I am in the middle of the desert. There's no cars, there are no people. I had no idea what to do. I'm putting the car into reverse, I'm getting outside of my car, I'm putting the floor mats like under the tire because I had seen people do that like on television. My car is absolutely, totally stuck and I had no cell phone service in my head. I was like, I am gonna die out here. And for whatever reason, I guess I was in panic mode. My thinking was like, grab the camera. You're in a sweatshirt, that's good enough. Let's go. And then I saw these lights in the distance and I just started walking towards them. And I'm kind of periodically looking at my phone. All of a sudden I get like a little blip of service. So somehow I'm able to search for the nearest gas station something pops up and I call the gas station. I say, hey, I got stuck in the salt flats and I need help. So he says, let me see what I can do. And he hangs up. 20 minutes later, all of a sudden I see headlights coming towards me. The guy from the gas station, he came out and he came to pick me up. I remember him asking me like, where's your car? Where's your car? And I'm like, it's out there. I don't know. It was so dark. He couldn't, none of us could see. He goes, it's like 600 bucks to get your car unstuck out of there. And that's where I start to freak out because I left my hometown in New Jersey five weeks earlier with only $1,000. So there's no way that I have $600 to get my car unstuck. So I call AAA and he says, I gotta get my kid up for school tomorrow. I can't do this stuff tonight. Call me tomorrow morning. At this point, I was just stuck at this gas station. So they have like a truck stop lounge in this downstairs area. And before I go downstairs, I ask for a plastic black garbage bag because I remember that I went on some field trip when I was in like first grade and I remember them saying that it's like an insulator or some, something like that, that it will keep you warm. And the police officer sees me and I have this trash bag over me and my arms are sticking out of the sides. So he kind of is asking me what, what, what's going on with me and I explain to him how my car is stuck. And the, the police officer starts explaining to me that there, there's really strict alcohol laws in the area. This gas station is one of the few places that sells alcohol, I guess, past a certain hour or something like that. And in order for the stores to sell alcohol past a certain hour, there needs to be a police officer present at all times. And right as I'm thinking, that is so weird, this door flies open and this guy, he must have been blackout drunk, just comes in and he's like violent. And he walks in and he starts yelling at the guy behind the counter and he's demanding for the guy to get him alcohol and just screaming and yelling. All of a sudden he lunges at the guy behind the counter. The cop just lunges at the dude, you know, restrains him, brings him outside and I don't know, I guess arrests him or something. You know, I'm just standing here with this trash bag over me just like, oh my goodness, a, a good thing they have this law, right? Good thing this cop is here all night. I went back down and I kind of just like was freezing cold, didn't get any sleep all night and uh, sat in this chair. I was just so happy that like nothing terrible happened and I got my car back and I still had, you know, enough money for a couple tanks of gas. This was from a few years back. A friend and I decided to take a trip to Joshua Tree. I booked the Airbnb thinking I was in Joshua Tree. No, I accidentally booked it in 29 Palms, close to Joshua Tree, but kind of not the same. 
my friend and I are driving and we're driving to our Airbnb and decided to do a little detour so we can like stretch our legs, go off-roading, do some hiking because we've just been in the car for so long. Kind of, you know, explore the area. So we're off-roading, having a great time. We found this amazing boulder. So we're driving around it. And then next thing you know it, my car just like starts sinking. Shoot, we're stuck. So of course, when you try reversing getting out of it it just makes it so much worse so we get out of the car and try finding you know rocks or anything that would really gain traction on the tire to help get the car out and look around and there's literally nothing so we're like okay we have to walk great walking with literally one pint of water and my dog in a hundred degree weather with nothing in sight we're walking for like two hours which every minute feels like 30 minutes and finally we start seeing houses but not like any kind of houses <laughs> these houses you couldn't even tell if someone was living there or not we passed a few houses and you know we're yelling hello is anybody around can anyone help us no response so we walk a little bit further and we hear something and it sounded like a TV. So we walk to one of these houses and as we arrive, it said on this giant sign, shot on arrival. So I'm like, nope, not, not going there. So I had my friend kind of go to the gate and start approaching the door and kind of yelling like, hello, is anyone inside? Can anyone to help us and this guy who's in the house screams out is that a human hell no oh no this is not good this guy comes out with no shirt on the biggest belly like no hair up top white strap literally it comes out of a horror film and i'm i see him from a distance and i'm like i'm no my buddy is like i need help we have our car stranded like is there a way you could like give us a ride somewhere or he's talking to this guy and he's like well there's a tow truck place around like 10 miles if you just go like five miles down that road then you turn and then you take two miles and then it'll be like another three miles this way i'm like what no there's no way so i make my presence known to this guy and was like sir can you please help us like I'm dehydrated, I'm so hot. I have a dog who's like panting. And he's like, oh, you got a female and a dog with you too? Okay, I will give you a ride to the tow truck place. Thank God. But then my friend hops in the back seat and I have to get in the front. I'm like, what? Rude. So anyways, I'm sitting up front with this guy in this car that is just full of junk. I'm like sitting on papers. There is just like garbage everywhere. He basically told us that we're idiots for getting the, our car stuck, which like, yes, I know, but not my fault. Eventually, he takes us to the tow truck place and we get there and we're like excited, realize that it's closed because it's Father's Day. We're like looking around, like peeping through like the windows to see if there's anything. And like finally around the corner, there's like this number that you could call. So I called it and this guy answers and um, he's out to breakfast or lunch with his family and so he had to get up and leave and you know come help us which like ugh, thank god for that man <laughs> otherwise i don't know what we would have done so i will forever be in debt with him it took him at least an hour to get to us and so this guy that drove us stayed with us and then my friend and him started hitting it off and started talking about the military he's went to Vietnam, he's part of the NRA, which I was like, hey. Okay. So yeah, I found out that like, he was kind of like a nice guy. But then eventually the tow truck guy came and picked us up and we didn't know where our car was. <laughs> we forgot, it was just so much going on. And so luckily we found it and my car was still there and it was great. All is done. We got back in the car and went to our house and did not leave because we we're like, okay, that's our big adventure of the weekend. So, yeah. My brother and I last year decided we wanted to 
take a big old road trip up the coast of California. We were going to discreet camp. Basically he had converted the bed of his truck into a little sleeper shell and he had fixed uh, a little bedding system so that one of us could sleep there and one of us would sleep in the cab. We would alternate nights on our week long trip. And he picked me up around nine or 10 in the morning and we began our ascent up the coast. By about eight or 9 p.m. we had made it past the capital, Sacramento, past San Francisco, which is as far north as I've ever been in my life, we decided to pull off and get some dinner. My dad was in the Marine, so he showed us uh, things that are called MREs, otherwise known as Meals Ready Easily. Our plan was to have this generator that we would hook up to a hot plate, put water on it, and then pour boiling water into it, zip it up, and let it sit, stir it up, and eat it. So we stopped at a gas station, got out, and sign number one that we were in for a rough night, it began to rain on us. We started up our portable generator and it worked for about 45 seconds. And then it turned off because it did not fully charge. So essentially what we did was we took the water straight from the bottle, poured it directly into the bag, zipped it up, stirred it up, mixed it until the water sort of dissolved into what would be the meal. I think I had like a Southwestern chicken salad situation. We just ate it lukewarm, ate it cold in the rain in the car. And it was a bit of an indicator of how things were gonna be going. But we decided we're not gonna let night one end on that note. So we decided to keep pressing forward. We're crossing the state line. We're getting into Oregon tonight. And we're gonna stay at this nice little campsite and finish the night on a good note. And so as we were crossing the state line, I started to notice there was a little bit more rain, except now the rain's getting thicker. And now all of a sudden we're in a big snowy blizzard. And we're behind an 18 wheeler and suddenly we can't see and we don't have any snow tires because we were not prepared for this. He immediately starts to slow the car down as we're going downhill. We drive another about 20 or 30 minutes to where this campsite is supposed to be. And we get off on our exit and we are driving through this very small town with hardly any street lights and we're both from the city. So this is not something we're used to. And according to the instructions, which I was probably reading wrong, we needed to turn off of the road down this sort of dirt path surrounded by trees. And it feels a little weird, but we're driving down anyway. And the further down we're going down the road, the tighter the road's getting and the more trees are starting to surround us. And after about seven or eight minutes of driving in, we just both decide this isn't safe. It's freezing cold. We're in the middle of nowhere and neither of us have cell service. We decide we need to turn the car around and there's no U-turn thing for us. We're surrounded by trees. I put on a headlamp, got out in the snow and was guiding my brother, backing him up, moving him forward because on both sides, the road fell off into these little creeks. I'm in the first real snow of my life, guiding the car back and forth. I'm freezing cold. I don't want the car to fall in. I'm tired. It's past midnight. And when we finally get him turned around, my brother drives off and leaves me in the back. And I have to run and catch up and I get in and he's cracking up. He's having a great time. When we finally got back to a place where we have cell service, we find this little truck stop, maybe one or two exits behind us. We decide that's where we're gonna have to stay. So we start driving back and we miss the exit and go back into California. So now we got to do a big old U-turn, go back up Mount Sisiki where it's still snowing. In fact, worse than before. We finally get through that, pull off and pull into our rest stop, which is just a standard side of the freeway rest stop. Basically that was night one. And fortunately for our trip, things did not get worse than that. 